I was asked by some of the students, I'm discussing a paper five question, which is based on the chi-square test. And this is the November 16 paper five, two and it's question number two. So as we look at question two, let's read the question very carefully. Cereal crops are often sprayed, sprayed uh, with selective herbicides, which can reduce the population of the local wildlife. So we have cereal crops, we spray them with selective herbicides and then they reduce these results in the reduction of the population of local wildlife. One method of helping to conserve wildlife is to leave a six meter strip called a headland around the fields where cereal crops are grown. And the headland is not sprayed with any herbicide. Now I've just given you a diagram of it like this. So this would be the headland which is not being sprayed and this would be six meter. Now look at it, I've made the width difference for you all to realize how the width has to be specified. The 20 fields, one side and the 20 fields on the other side. Now it says the headland is not sprayed with any herbicide. An investigation was carried out into the effect on the butterfly populations of leaving headlands unsprayed. So in one group we sprayed and in the other group we did not spray. So the headland is not sprayed with any herbicides. An investigation into the effect of leaving headlands unsprayed. Two groups of 20 fields growing with the same cereal crop were studied. So same cereal crop, maybe wheat crop, maybe maize crop. The headlands of one group of 20 fields were left unsprayed by herbicide. The headland of the other group of 20 fields were sprayed with herbicide. So one not sprayed, one sprayed with herbicide. The total number of each species of butterfly was counted in each group of 20 fields. A chi-square test was used to find out if the difference in the butterfly populations were significant. Really, did it matter? Did spraying or not spraying, did it really have an effect or did it have no effect? So you have got to do some sort of a statistical test to prove your point of view. Now state two variables that were standardized in this investigation that were standardized that they've given you number of field studies was the same. Width of the headland was the same. So these were standardized. And the type of the cereal crop because it is saying to you in the question that uh, it was the same cereal crop. So it was saying here where cereal crops are grown. Same cereal crop. Yes, here was the point. So state two variables that were standardized. So these are something that you have to pick up from the question. So number of fields were 20 in both, width of headland was 60 meter strip in both, and type of the cereal crop was the same. So this was standardized. Then it says state a reason by the chi-square test. Now there's a simple reason. Whenever the chi-square test is, you're comparing observed values with expected values. So there can't be anything else in which you use the chi-square test. You have to use it when only when you're doing observed and expected values comparison. So testing the difference between observed and expected values. You sprayed and then you were looking at the observations and then you were looking at what your expectations were. And then you do a statistical test to either prove your point or to disprove your point. Now state a null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is something which everybody must know. What is a null hypothesis? Null hypothesis is when you negate when you say no, like I say caffeine decreases reaction time. So you say caffeine does not decrease reaction time. I say increasing temperature increases the rate of enzyme action. And you say increasing temperature does not increase the rate of enzyme action. If I say increasing light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis, you say increasing light intensity does not increase the rate of photosynthesis. So null means saying no, just like as a kid, when your mother asks you to do certain things and you say no, I'm not going to do it. So it's just like that. So null hypothesis, state a null hypothesis for the chi-square test for this investment. Now the important thing is you say no significant difference. This is the word that you must use. No significant difference between the number of butterflies of each species when the headland sprayed or not sprayed. So this is the exact word you use and you use the whatever the experiment they're asking you to be talking about. So no significant difference between the number of butterflies of each species when headland sprayed and not sprayed. So you're negating the whole theory, the whole null hypothesis for this investigation in which we were comparing the number of butterfly species when we sprayed and when we did not spray. Now table 2.1 shows the results, one of the species, 
calculate the value of x square. Now, you see from the formula, you can see what we are doing in the formula. O minus E whole square. So observe minus expected whole square over expected. Now, how are we going to calculate the expected? This is the one where I know you all struggled. Now, if you look at it, the total is 40. So if we did not, if we, if we looked at it and we said it was fair, then both of them should have 20, 20 because total was 40. So if the total population, so species Q, number or headland sprayed with herbicide was only three species. Observe three. Number or headland not sprayed was 37. So total was 40. If we had not done this, then they would have been equal on both sides. So they would have been 20 in the one which is sprayed and 20 in the one which was not sprayed. So that is how you calculate the expected. In some other questions, we calculate in a different manner and I'll try to do those questions. And then of course you calculated O minus E and O minus V was 17 whole square. Similarly, in the next one also 37 minus 20 was also 17. So that was also the same. And that is why this working was also the same. And then when you added these two, you added these two. So you get 28.9. Now this is the value of X square. Now the question is, what do you do with this value of X square? Now, if you look at it, there were two observations. So if we have to calculate the degrees of freedom, you would do it 2 minus 1 and that is equal to 1. So when you have to do the degree of freedom, you have to look at the number of observations. Say there were four observations, then you would do 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. But here, no, we don't have that. We only have two observations. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So you will look in 1 in the degree of freedom. Now the rule is that in the degree of freedom, you're going to look in 1. And in biology, we always look at 0 0.05. If you study add maths, you will study, we study other probabilities as well, but not in biology. In biology, the rule is 0 0.05 or 5% is the one that we always study. So now at one degree of freedom, the critical value, this is always, this is considered the critical value. Critical value is from your degrees of freedom, like if you had say four, and then you had four, n was four, then n minus one is three. So in three, you would like, so critical value would be 7.82. But here, this is not the situation. The situation is that we had two, two number of data. So n is equal to two. Here we had n is equal to two. So n minus one. n minus one means two minus one. So that is equal to one. So here, that's why I'm looking at one. And rule is you always look at 0.05%. Now you look at the value which is here. So you look at this line. And the value is 3.84. That is the critical value. Always remember that. So if it was four, then you would have looked at three, then 7.82 would have been the critical value. But here, no, we are looking at that. So it's 3.84. Now, what is your value? Your value is 28.9. Now, the main thing you've got to see, is it more than the critical value or is it less than the critical value? So here the value is 3.84. Your value is 2.89. Now, look how we write this. We say state what you conclude from the result of the chi-square test for species Q. Significant at P less than 0 0.01. So if you look at these values, this is 6.64, 10.89, 9, something else, something else. So 28.9 would come here somewhere. Now look at it. This is now decreasing. This was 0 0.01. This was 0 0.001. This would be 0 0.00001. So 28.9 would come somewhere here in the table. This would be a big table. So it was significance at P less than 0 0.001. This is what you need to understand. Why am I saying less than 0 0.001? So you look at these values, 3.84, 6.64, 10.83, 2.28.9 .2 would be somewhere here, which would be 0 0.00001. So it is significant at probability 0 0.001, less than 0 0.001. So this is how you first find out the critical value, then you look at your value, and then you tell me where does it fit in this table. Simple sort of a diagram to explain this to you. Critical value n minus 1.05 probability. You find out the critical value, this is this, whatever it is. I'm not saying it is going to be this all the time. Now your chi-square value is 28.9. Your value is more than the critical value. Your result is significant. Null hypothesis was that there's no significant distance. So you have actually rejected the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is rejected because in the null hypothesis, you said there is no difference, no significant difference. So that means the herbicide is causing, the herbicide is causing the number of butterflies to decrease. 
But in the in the null hypothesis, you said there is no significant difference. But if your value of x square comes more than the critical value, if your value is more than the critical value, you reject the null hypothesis and you then look at the question and you say in this question we said herbicide is causing the number of butterflies to decrease. Please pause it here, read through the question and then listen to my explanation again. Coming back to this question, table 2.3 shows the results and the significance of the results from the chi-squared test for the species of butterflies counted. Table 2.3, butterfly species RST, UV, W. Number of each species on headland spray, sprayed with herbicide. 1, 17, 38, 56, 13, 29, 59, 93, 0, 11. And, now there's something common. You can see something very glaringly common. Number of each species on headland sprayed was always less than the ones which were not sprayed. 17, 1, 56, 38, 29, 13, 93, 59, 11, 0, 23. So all of them, there is no anomalous reading in any of this. So, I mean, this is the sequence which I want you to look at at the end of the question. And then I will go on to the next part of the question. With reference to table 2.3 and your calculation for species, you state three conclusions that can be drawn from these results about the effect of herbicides on the species of butterfly study. Where herbicides use fewer populations of all species investigated. This was the first point which I told you. Species S is the only one that is not significant then herbicide has greater effect on population of R and Q. 1, 17. R and Q. This is the Q that they are talking about. So number on headland sprayed was 3 and not sprayed was 37. Herbicide has greater effect on population of R and Q. This was the second, third point. And then it says reference to sequence of the severity of the effect of the herbicide. Now that, of course, we will go back. This is the severity of it. So uh, I'll just show that to you. Then the probability of the results being due to chance is less than 5% for all species except S. All of them were less than 5% except S. And this was the sequence which we were talking about, which I talked about in the sequence that was, I'm just going to go back and show you that again. So, here you can see the sequence again, once again. You see R is 0 0.001, and then is V and W, and then is T and U. But there's another thing which I want to discuss with you all regarding paper five, is that you all must go through the exam report. These are available online. You can just type in the year and type in the exam report, which is written as ER. Now you must read the key notes, the key messages. Candidates need to read the question carefully to make sure that their answers refer to what is being asked. This is particularly important when evaluating given information such as method for investigation or the results of an investigation. Candidates need to be familiar with the different types of data specified in the syllabus and understand how to choose a statistical test suited to the data. When evaluating the results of statistical tests, candidates should understand how to interpret probability values and recognize that the smaller the probability value, the greater the chance that the external factor being tested is causing the observed data. One of the main components of the paper is planning, so there will always be a section testing the skill. Questions always specify that any method described should be detailed enough for another person to follow. In effect, this means describing suitable apparatus, volumes, and concentrations of solutions, if appropriate, so that someone who has never done the experiment could follow the instructions and obtain valid results. Now, there were general comments on this paper, which I'm not going to read. And because I haven't done discuss the question uh, one with you. And I'm just going to go directly to question two, uh, which is here we come to question two. Although many candidates were able to identify the two variables that had been standardized, a large proportion answered in terms of what should have been standardized. The most common correct answer was the number of fields and the same crop. The most common errors were to state that the butterfly population, the amount of herbicide was standardized. They were asking you questions, what were standardized in the question, what was given information. Now in B1, the most common correct answer was that it has discrete data. Discontinuous was not accepted as this can be confused with a type of genetic variation. Answers that were in terms of finding a difference between observed and expected data were expected or accepted. Part two, many candidates could not give a suitable null hypothesis. Null is the thing in which you say no. 
no to whatever the investigation is all about. Increasing light increases photosynthesis. No, it does not. A null hypothesis assumes that there is no significant difference between the results from investigations carried out in different conditions. In this case, an accepted null hypothesis would include three main components. No significant difference between butterfly populations or numbers of butterfly and fields with headlands and fields without headlands. Now you understand how the exam report is going to help you immensely. Part three, familiarity with the sky square test would be a benefit to candidates in answering the question. Many candidates did not show they understood how to work out the expected number E of butterflies from the observed number O. Some candidates who did correctly work out E and process the figures correctly did not appear to know that the two figures needed to be added to obtain the chi square value. Candidates who had incorrect values for E were allowed error carried forward if these were processed correctly to obtain a chi square value. The majority of candidates gave a correct answer. Common incorrect responses as a result of candidates choosing an incorrect number of degree of freedom were 5.99 and 7.82. Weaker answers had probability values such as P is less than 0.01 and P is less than 0.05. Part 5. Candidates who had correctly calculated the value of chi-square usually answered correctly. Error carried forward was allowed for incorrect values of chi-square interpreted correctly from the probability table. Now, the C part of the question was the critical one where you all messed it up. For this question, candidates were expected to use the data in table 2.3 about the butterfly populations and draw conclusions about the effect of herbicides on all of the species. Most candidates found it difficult to interpret the statistical data and tended to answer in terms of more significant or less significant rather than the probability of herbicide being the cause of the decrease in butterfly numbers. Stronger answers recognize that the numbers of all species were reduced by the use of herbicide, although species S was the only one where this was not significant. Only the strongest responses commented about the degree of severity of the effect of the herbicide on the different species based on the probability values. In particular, species are with 99.9% .9 certainty that the herbicide was causing the decrease in numbers. Weaker answers tended to ignore the results of the chi-square test and refer to raw data. Using the raw data for species V also led to an incorrect conclusion that the number of species had decreases. The probability values suggest otherwise. Many of these candidates also tended to describe the data rather than make comparison. For example, although some candidates noted that the results for species S were not significant, they did not identify clearly enough that this was the only one of the species studied. Some candidates misinterpreted the question and answered in terms of not using herbicides, commonly stating that without herbicides, the number of butterflies increased. So please always read the examiner's report. And that is a very helpful guide to explain many things to you. And I have that's why I put this in into this paper today. And I want everybody looking at it and you can just download it. They're all available on uh, online in different uh, websites. So uh, I hope this is a bit better and I hope this has helped you. If there are any questions, please um, you can WhatsApp me or you can write on your YouTube comments and I'll try to answer them as befittingly as possible. And thank you once again for watching this video.